My goal in this video was to pretty much skip the uh, dipping process, the preparation, the wax burnout, and basically the bronze pour process. I've done that in so many other videos. It feels pretty repetitive. My goal in this video was to document putting the pieces together. Um, this is a first for me so on such a scale, and uh, I thought it might be interesting to see if it goes together easy or if it's a battle or somewhere in between. So um, I'm going to do just a little quick montage of how we get up to all the different parts, and then we'll start really what this video is all about. Here Debbie is, uh, she's catching the moles. That she just needs to make sure they don't fall on the floor. She has the mitts, which are completely heat proof. I'm using the welding gloves because I have better control. And you see the, the gloves not actually on fire, but it had some glue on it and the glue was on fire. And I was trying to blow it out, but that doesn't work when you have a face shield on. So those gloves are hot. I put them down. I grabbed these little white gloves and they're crap. They need to go into the garbage. Sorry, Michael. These are Michael's old gloves. And I'm using uh, another pair of gloves, and this is something I've done because the mitts are just so awkward, I'm scared I'm going to drop a mold. We poured uh, seven molds, um, poured two at a time, and then put the crucible back and recharged it with bronze and this is the safest way. I don't have to worry about running out of bronze. And really, when you put the crucible back in the um, furnace, it, the second batch and the third batch melts pretty fast because everything's so freaking hot. And Debbie's controlling the hoist, and she's come a long way. It's really easier now to have her there um, doing it. I can do it myself, but it's kind of awkward trying to control the hoist and the um, crucible at the same time. But I can do it. I just It's nicer when she's there, especially on a bigger pour. Uh, the pours all went well. Um, no problem with any of them. And we, as soon as they cooled down a little bit, we brought them outside and started banging on them. So yesterday we poured. We poured three times. Well, yeah. Um, twice we put the crucible back in the furnace to melt more, melt more bronze. Um, my gating worked. Everything came out. If anything, maybe we had too many gates. No issues with any of the casts, except for this little butterfly turned into a moth. It didn't, it didn't flow. It was extremely thin, probably less than an eighth of an inch. But we did two, so we got one good butterfly. Uh, both feathers came out. Just uh, uh, could, could have gone better. So the next step is to uh, start cutting off sprues and risers and getting down to the metal that stays and starting to try to fit them together and I'm under no illusion that everything's going to fit just right. I am anticipating struggling because the waxes are so limber and if a wax just changes shape a little bit and you sprue it and pour it then the bronze is not in the right shape. So. Uh, Never done this many pieces before, but we're going to make it go together. Next up is the nasty job of cutting off all the extra metal, the sprues and the risers and the vents and the cups. And it's just not a pleasant job. Um, this time I did use my plasma torch. I have a very old plasma torch. It works when it wants to work but it can get the ones up in the middle that you can't get to with a grinder. So I used it, it worked. Um, it burned up the um, consumables on the end of the torch, which is another 25 bucks. So I don't use this thing very often, but maybe one day I'll get a new one that works. So all the pieces are cut free. Most of the little stubs and stuff on the back are cut down. They still need to be ground a little smoother. And so now we need to finish removing the ceramic shell from the cavities where we can get to them now and bla bead blast them all good and try to put them together and make a piece of art out of this pile of junk. Okay, I've been working on further cleanup of the pieces, further grinding of the stuff off the back, um, sanding the edges and putting them in the blasting cabinet and getting them clean. Takes a little while, but it's not so hard. 
And on the second piece, I found a problem. Um, I didn't see it before because there was investment on the inside. It looks like shrinkage. There was a big sprue right next to it and it had a lot of shrinkage. I don't know, pretty tough. I'm gonna try to weld it back. If that doesn't work, I can always pull the mold down from the um, attic and just cast this little piece, cast a piece uh, of wax in this shape, cast it in bronze and cut it out and weld it in. Um, I don't want to have to do that, but I could. At least it's not on the face. Well, let's work on this thing. I'm going to put this piece of bronze, it's the same alloy, on the inside and weld it. And then when I flip it over to weld the shrinkage, I can really pour the heat on it. I don't have to worry about blowing through. I can just fill the whole area with melted bronze. Quite a few brazen rods later, I've basically capped that whole area of bad metal. Um, now I'm going to grind it down. It should be good because I had a big backing plate on the bottom, so there should be like three-eighths of an inch of good metal right there and after I grind it down I'm gonna have to weld between the little boy's cheek and the new weld metal but I'm gonna get it as close to finished contours like okay for me that's pretty good welding just uh, take some time on the grinder and we'll be good as new this has been way more challenging than I thought it would be nothing wants to fit together um, I have got the two legs fitting pretty well and the two front pieces seem to match with each other and the back piece seems to fit pretty well but then when I weld these together I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand this joint and this joint don't line up worth a crap. And this joint and this joint doesn't line up very well. It's just been a bear. Um, I'm going to keep on plugging. I'm just using a little tack so nothing's irreversible. Been a challenge. This fit up has been pretty much a nightmare. Um, it's hard to believe that between taking a wax out of a mold that was correct and pouring bronze, things happen so much. But for right now, this needs to line up with this, so it needs to go that way. But this one's lined up, so I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna cut these wells, trim this, and try to get it to go that way a little bit. And that's gonna make this crack work, but I think the whole, the legs all need to rotate a little bit. So that's what we've been doing. You gotta tack it because you can't hold it in place and look at all the pieces. So you tack it and then you figure out what's wrong and you cut the tack and you do some adjustments and it's just over and over again. But gradually, gradually we're getting it uh, closer. All right, so I did some cutting here and here and I got this piece fitting better and I put a substantial amount of weld on it. I'm hoping I don't have to move it again. Um, this fit is pretty good. I'm going to flip it over and see the uh, back is not too good. This needs to bend out. I'm pretty sure. This is a three-dimensional piece, so it really can't bend. This is where I am so far. i got the front actually fitting pretty well. Some big cracks to weld, but I can do that. Um, I've used C-clamps. I've used them all. I've used the hand maul. I've used just about everything and I've also put the torch, the settling torch, and heated it and I was able to bend some things. This is pretty thick. I was able to bend some metal that I was not able to bend with just a maul. Like I, this is a three-dimensional structure. Flat sheets bend okay, but this is three-dimensional. It goes all the way around. But I was still able to bend it a little bit. Um, the back is still pretty abysmal, but making progress. It's going to be all right. This thing kind of caught me off guard on how difficult it was to put together. And then I kind of quit videoing because I was uh, busy. But it's basically put together. Um, what I ended up having to do was the pieces didn't fit well. 
I just had to tack them in place and do the best I could to get it together because you can't really hold the pieces up in midair to see what you need to do to them to get them to fit. So tack the whole structure up all the way around and then one by one you look at the pieces and you say well this one would fit better if I trim this little bump off this probably, bump probably shouldn't have been there and maybe I bend it a little bit so the flat pieces you can bend with a hammer um, the curved pieces you got to put some heat on them so I would cut my tack put it down address these issues put it back go to the next piece and continue like that and by the time I went around it about three times by pulling the pieces off and bending and trimming and shimming I got it uh, pretty good right now it's it's good so I just finished heating the arms with the torch and bending them both of them so that the uh, where the ropes gonna go will be parallel I put these uh, half inch round bars in there and they're real tall it kind of helps me see what's going on and I got the swing slid in there and it's straight so I'm gonna weld this the swing and flip it upside down and keep on welding this little piece we missed in the casting process so it's in the shell room right now getting cast and it's been a challenge and I don't know if all foundries have this much of a challenge when they do three-dimensional stuff but uh, it's going to work, coming together. Right now it's very hot because I've been having a torch on it for a while. Well, not finished by a long shot, but finished for today. Pretty much all welded except this seam under here and this piece that we have to recast. Um, what I need to do now is make all the welds disappear as much as I can. And, uh, after that, I'll hang it in the ring. I don't want to hang it in the ring now. It'll just be that much harder to move around. So, it's shaping up. So, a week or two ago, when I did the wax of this mold, I painted it all and then I trimmed it nice and neatly around the perimeter. But I made a mistake because this is not the perimeter, this is the perimeter. So I cut off this piece, which I didn't mean to do, and that left this. So that is why we have this big hole in the arm, because I never cast the piece. So right now I'm uh, made a separate mold. I'm heating up my little crucible before I have a small pour with just that piece. Okay, I've skipped a lot of steps, like two weeks worth. But I think I just made the last couple of little wells. I had a little boo-boo under his chin, a little hole right there, a the divot in the finger, uh, I'll grind those down, and the sculptor lady is coming to go over it and do some final touches. And it's about done. We'll try to get it back in the sandblasting cabinet. I think it'll fit so we can get it a uniform color or get all the shiny off. And then, I think we ought to go ahead and put it in the hoop before we patine it because when a weld is going to mess up the color and it's hard to match a patina for me anyway. So, when she blesses it, we'll install it in the hoop. And I thought this was going to be like a how-to video, but it was just too long and involved and I get concentrating on things and I forget it all about the camera. So, uh, my apologies. So getting the sculpture set into the ring, this uh, an issue I was trying to ignore for a long time came to a head. The ring is just too limber. Um, it'll hold the piece, but it's kind of bouncy. If the piece was just going to be in my yard, it would be fine, but it's going to be in a public place, so it really needs to be robust. Um, I'm going to double the ring, which means I need to cast uh, six more full ring segments. I had this little short piece and I went ahead and welded it on, and just the short pieces made a big difference. So I was hoping to finish it up this video, but it's getting long, so um, I'm going to end it here. We got the additional hoop pieces in the shell room. We'll pour them and wrap them around. It's really not that hard of work. And then that should be it except for patining. Thanks for watching.